None of us ever agreed on the exact beginning. Was it when we started drawing the chalk figures or when they started to appear on their own? Was it the terrible accident? Or when they found the first body? Hi friends, it is Sam and welcome to the final instalment in my Vlogtober Spooky Readathon. The final book on my Vlogtober Spooky Readathon list is The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. Now I read um, on Google that this is more of a psychological thriller, but the reviews in the front cardboardy pages um, kind of make it out to be creepy and horror-y. It looks spooky. Um, I really like the, the little chalk dudes on the spine. And I am really hoping that I'm gonna enjoy this so that we can exit the spooky readathon with a big bang. However, I'm gonna have to get a lot of this read today because I may have ordered a used Nintendo Switch Lite with Animal Crossing and it might be about to take over my life. So I've got to edit a video, I've got to read a chunk of this and I've got to walk the dog and just keep my head down today because the minute that light gets into my hands, bye bye life. But now it's lunch time so I'm gonna get some lunch and then we will dive straight into this and find out how horrific it really is. Happy Halloween everyone! pages into the chalk man it follows two narratives one in the past 1989 and one in the present day 2016 there are five friends four boys and one girl and at the very beginning the main character eddie witnessed a massive disaster at a fairground a ride kind of fell apart with people on it this girl lost half her face and her leg was hanging off and it was gruesome. But he and his new albino teacher, Mr. Halloran, managed to save her life. Mr. Halloran wrapped his belt around her leg and tightened it as you would to stem blood flow and the girl survived. Also, we learned that the main character, Eddie, is a bit of a klepto. He collects things that people leave places and as a kid he stole. We learn that the female character Nikki is most likely abused by her father. It's mentioned that she's always got bruises somewhere and in the last chapter I read Eddie noticed that she had quite a large bruise on her arm and she shrugged it off. She was like I walked into a door. Her dad said something to Eddie's dad at one of their other friends birthday party and <laughs> Eddie's dad kind of whacked him and threatened to kill him. So something's going on there. Also, in the present day, Eddie is only in contact with Gav and Hoppo. Their other friend Mickey was kind of mean and he drove Gav somewhere drunk when they were 17 and Gav ended up paralyzed from the waist down. So they kind of hate Mickey in the present day, but Eddie's about to go and meet him for some mysterious reason. And Nikki, the girl, we don't know where she is. So I'm wondering if she is one of the victims of the chalk man murderer. Although I like Mr. Halloran, he kind of got it the idea into the gang's heads to start drawing chalk things on the pavement. So I am wondering if he's dodgy. I hope not because I, I actually really like him. Page 
pages of this book and I am loving this. So good, so good. Mickey arrives at Eddie's house with a proposition. He was like, remember that body we found as kids? I've been approached to write a book about it. Do you want in? Eddie's kind of like, no, not particularly. And back in the past, something quite horrific happens. Eddie and his friends are in the woods making a den. And a bunch of bullies come down the hill throwing bricks at them. So Eddie throws one back and it hits like the ringleader in the eye. And the ringleader's like, right, you're dead. A few days later, the ringleader finds out that Eddie and his friends communicate with chalk drawings. They each have their own colour and he uses Mickey's chalk drawing to bait Eddie. And Eddie comes outside and the bully, Sean, kind of sexually assaults him. Mr. Halloran catches him in the act, uh, he's assaulting him in a park and he says to Eddie that karma's gonna get Sean and I was like hmm I'm already suspicious of you Mr. Halloran what you want about what you gonna do to our Sean eh? Then Sean's body is found in a river an accident and in the night Sean's body, Sean's zombie corpsey body comes to Eddie and he's like beware the chalk man and then he tries to sexually assault him again and it's unclear whether it's a dream or not so I'm like is Eddie actually seeing these bodies? Are these like spirits or something? I'm leaning towards them being like psychic dreams but it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's tense. And then like each chapter has a cliffhanger and then it like switches tense. So you've got past chapter cliffhanger, goes back to present cliffhanger and I'm like, I can't deal with this. I've got a good chunk read today, which is good because my switch was shipped this morning. So it might come tomorrow and um, I might be a bit slower reading the rest of this. I didn't film anything yesterday, although I did read a few chapters. And um, before you at me for like outfit repeating, A, I didn't wear this yesterday, so it's like two days in a row, not three. And B, mind your business. No one cares about outfit repeating anymore, it's so old. All right, cool. Well, it, it, just in case you think I smell, you know? I do, but. <laughs> the Chalk Man is absolutely exceptional so far. I'm 219 pages in I believe and it's so good. Every single chapter ends on a cliffhanger and I'm like can you stop? I actually need to live my life um, but I can't. I can't tear myself away from this book. I have just about managed to tear myself away from the book and come to Blaze Castle with Sis and the boy. He's gone. I don't know where he is. He's over there. But oh my god, it's so good. Back in 1986, I think I said 1989 earlier in this vlog, it's 1986. The bully, Sean, had a funeral. Obviously, you're dead. Like, you're gonna have a funeral if, if you're dead. And Hoppo has to leave his dog tied up outside the church. As the funeral's going on, 
uh, Mickey kind of leaves, like too upset by the death of his brother. And then, after the funeral, Eddie and Hoppo come outside to find Hoppo's dog is gone. And there is a chalk drawing on a wall of a stick man and a stick dog. So they go to find the dog and it turns out he's been poisoned and he's vomiting and he's dying under a bush and like I was so close to tears at this point. A few weeks later Mickey's kind of standoffish because obviously his brother's dead and like he doesn't know how to deal with it because he didn't have a great relationship with his brother but he um attends the the ash scattering of Hoppo's dog and they argue and Mickey ends up kicking Hoppo's dog's ashes everywhere which was not cool was it Jess? Oh my god I thought you were eating dog treats then. <laughs> <laughs> the reverend is attacked and Ed's dad is a suspect but Mr Halloran assures the police that he saw Ed's dad because he'd been out that night um, seeing a 17 year old girl. The girl whose face got like... I think we should walk up that way. Okay, slashed as the theme park ride fell apart. So he's been like seeing her. So he has to quit his job as a teacher because it's a bit dodgy because she's only 17. In the present day, Mickey's body is found in a river, the same way his brother's body was found. Ed goes to see Gav about it because Gav already knows he's been told by the police and Gav admits that he'd been the one to throw Sean's bike in the river which led to his death because he'd seen Ed get molested by Sean and he was getting his revenge. So Sean's death was kind of Gav's fault, even though he didn't intend for him to die. The three remaining people who live in Anderbury have been sent chalk drawings. Drawings of hung stick men. Creepy, creepy. And Eddie's starting to like, get a bit worried that he's been the one killing because he found his coat in his wardrobe with blood stains on the cuff. So his lodger, Chloe, he goes to see her for lunch and she's not at work. And her manager's like, she hasn't worked here for like months. So he's like, what? He said, we had to sack her after she had an argument with a customer. And that customer turned out to be Nikki. So Nikki is confirmed alive. Also, it turns out that Walt's a girl aka Mr Halloran's girlfriend, aka Elise, she was the person that the gang found murdered. So we are uh, just walking our boy right now. We're gonna play a bit of Star Wars today. My Nintendo Switch did not arrive yesterday, which um, we are not happy about. We wanted to like get the Samland ball rolling, didn't we Jess? The, um, the group find chalk directions into the woods. So they follow the directions and they find Eliza's body. They find this body all chopped up and buried like under different trees, but no head. Eddie is a bit of a klepto, a bit of a collector, and he just collects random pieces of people's life, pieces they won't miss 
So he takes Eliza's ring to give to Mr. Halloran because he knows Mr. Halloran is in love with her. He goes to Mr. Halloran's cottage and the door's open. So he goes in and he hears a bath running and my brain's just going like, he's killed himself. But Eddie's only 12 years old and he's like, oh, he's having a bath. I'll just leave the ring on the table and leave him to it. So he leaves and then obviously Mr. Halloran is found dead the ring is in his house so everyone believes he's the murderer case closed back in the present it turns out chloe is the child of eliza's friend who was impregnated <coughs> excuse me <laughs> her dad came into the church at sean's funeral accusing sean of assaulting her but it turns out sean didn't assault her and the father was actually the reverend so she regularly visits the reverend in his home where he is um struck dumb he just like stares into nothing doesn't speak sits in his wheelchair but i had this sneaking suspicion i was like this is an act it's got to be an act like it's too convenient the reverend killed her mistaking her for her friend because her friend was carrying his child and he didn't want this to come to light and ruin his reputation. But obviously he killed the wrong girl and Chloe was born. Eddie himself was the one to take Elise's head and hide it under his floorboards because like I just mentioned, he's a klepto and he collects things. He took her head and he kept it all those years. There was a moment when the reverend was just chasing everyone with a big axe and like he almost chopped off Hoppo's arm. It was crazy. Absolute masterpiece. I loved every page of this. So good. So there we go. Thus concludes my Vlogtober spooky readathon. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you next time with another video. Bye!